In this Spree Commerce Docs video, you will learn how to create a new product, categorize it, and make it active on the storefront. Here you can set the product title. This name will be displayed on product listing pages, product detail pages, checkout, and in search engine listings and social sharing links if a meta title has not been set. Here is where you can add the product description. This description will be displayed on product detail pages and in search engine listings and social sharing links if a meta description has not been set. The editor allows you to format the description with standard formatting options like bold, italic, lists, headings, images, etc. This is where you can add visual media to the product. Simply click on the plus icon and select the files you'd like to upload. Once added, you can rearrange the images by clicking on the six dots in the top right corner of an image and dragging and dropping, with the leftmost image being the main image that's displayed on PLPs and the order of the remaining images affecting the order in which they are presented on the PDP. If you'd like to remove an image, then you can either check the box in the upper left corner and click Delete Selected, or click on the image itself, click Delete, and then click Save. The alternative text for an image can be modified by clicking on the image, adding the text, and then clicking Save. The status field indicates whether or not the product is available for purchase on the storefront. You can set the status by selecting it from the dropdown. The statuses are as follows. Active, meaning the product is live and discoverable on the storefront. Draft, meaning the product is only visible to the admin. And archived. The Make Active At field allows you to set a date on which the product will automatically become active. Simply set the date and time in the calendar or enter it manually. If the product is already set to active, this option will be hidden. The Available On field allows you to set the date on which the product will be released. For example, you can set a future date to indicate that the product is on pre-order. Simply set the date and time in the calendar or enter it manually. The Discontinue On field allows you to set a date on which the product will automatically be removed from your site, meaning that it will be set to draft. Simply set the date and time in the calendar or enter it manually. Let's jump into product categorization. Product catalog categorization is a vital part of running any e-commerce business, unless you only have a few products. The larger your catalogs, the more important it is to thoroughly categorize as it makes product discovery much easier for the end user. Taxonomies is where you can assign categories, collections, brands, or any other taxons to the product. By adding the product to a taxon, it will be discoverable wherever that taxon is presented, for example, a featured taxon section on the homepage or that taxon's PLP. Clicking on the dropdown will display a list of all created taxons to select from or you can narrow the results by typing the name partially or fully. In the dropdown, taxons are displayed with reference to their position in the taxonomy to avoid confusion with similarly named taxons, for example. Fashion women shoes, fashion men shoes. Simply select which taxons you'd like to assign to the product. There's no limit to the number of the taxons that can be assigned. Product tags are useful for slicing your products into, for example, eco-friendly, vegan, women's wear. Later, you may filter products by tag during merchandising, use it for displaying related products on the storefront, or automatically creating collections. To modify the SEO elements of the product, simply click Edit to open the SEO user interface and modify the fields as necessary. Changing the meta title affects how the name of the product page will be displayed in search engine listings and social sharing previews. If not set, the product name will be used. Changing the meta description affects how the excerpt will be displayed in search engine listings and social sharing previews. If not set, the product description will be used. Changing the slug affects the URL of the product page. If not set, the product name will be used. For example, a product named Black Hoodie will have the slug slash Black Hoodie by default. The pricing section is where you add the price to the new product. Set the price of the product in the amount field. This is the amount that will be displayed on the storefront and the amount a customer must pay to purchase the product unless they have a discount applied. If an item is marked down, you can enter its old price in the compare at amount field to show customers how it compares to the new price. This will add a crossed out compare at amount and a sale icon to the product wherever it appears on the storefront. Inventory is where you can set the stock quantity and other important inventory settings. If you have multiple stock locations, you'll be able to set the inventory level for each location separately. Checking the track quantity box enables the tracking of stock levels for this particular product, meaning you'll need to add a positive non-zero quantity if you want customers to be able to purchase it, unless it's back quarterable. Leaving this box unchecked means that stock levels will not be tracked and you will not be required to enter a stock quantity. For example, you might not track quantity if you're selling digital or made-to-order products. The quantity value you set here indicates the amount of stock you have for this particular product, or at least how much you wish to assign to the online store. 
This can be updated later to reflect actual stock levels if necessary. Please note, when items are sold, the quantity sold will be automatically deducted from the total. A stock keeping unit or SKU is an alphanumeric code used to keep track of stock levels internally and for general inventory management purposes. It's not mandatory to add SKUs, but if you do, each product and variant should have a unique SKU. It's up to you to decide which convention to follow for defining SKUs, but you could use them to convey information about the products, for example, SKUs containing SS24 are from the Summer Spring 24 collection. Barcodes, for example, ISBN, UPC, or GTIN identifiers are unique codes used to identify and track products. They're useful for inventory management, ensuring accuracy in order fulfillment, and simplifying the scanning process during shipping or in physical stores. You might want to use a barcode if you sell products through multiple channels, need to integrate with third-party logistics providers, or want to streamline warehouse operations. Variants is where you can define the different options available for a new product, such as size and color. To add variants to a new product, please follow these steps. Step 1. Click Add Options like Size or Color. Step 2. Select the option name, for example, Size or Color. Step 3. Set the option values, for example, Black, Blue, Small, or Large to Step 4. Click Done once you've added all the options. Step 5. If you like to add another option type, repeat steps 1 through 4. When clicking Done, you'll notice the UI changes to combine pricing and inventory for each variant, allowing you to set the price and quantity for each separately. If you'd like to learn how to add more option types, please refer to another support article. Pro tip. Make sure that the option values are consistent across all products. For example, don't set sizes as small, medium, and large for one product, and S, M, and L for another. The shipping section allows you to add important shipping information that should be associated with the product. If you're planning on using shipping methods that take the size and weight of a package into consideration, then it's important to set the dimensions and weight of each product to accurately calculate the shipping cost. You can select the unit you'd like to use for each field, for example, inches or feet, and pounds or ounces. Here you can select the shipping category that should be assigned to the product. For example, if it's a digital product, then it should have the digital category. Product properties are displayed on the product details page and can convey additional information about the products, such as the material, care instructions, allergens, eco-friendly, etc. Simply fill in the fields with the correct values. Now that you've added all the necessary product information, make sure to click the blue Create button at the bottom of the product editor. Otherwise, you may lose all of your progress. All done, you've created a product. Well done.